doing well, I can share. Right? Okay. Mail. Can people see that? Mail. Yes, I can see you. I see you, slides. you can see my slides, yeah? Yeah, but not full screen yet. Um, well, you have to toggle. If you have everybody listed in a grid, then you won't see it full, but... Oh well, yeah, that might be. It. Does it work? Everybody else, can you can you confirm that you can see my see my? Oh, I see yeps. Yeah. I see yeps in the in the chat. This is like being a, a Twitch streamer. This. So if anybody wants to um, donate some bits or subscribe, um, I'll try and get a good speed run in here as well. I have 14 minutes now to um, give a presentation. But uh, basically, I just want to provide a quick overview of the social media activity that we're doing inside um, LibreOffice at the Document Foundation in the marketing project as well. So not just what I'm doing and or Italo's doing, but the wider community as well. Um, so obviously social media is a good way to reach out to people, to get to um, spread the word about LibreOffice and get new users, but also to uh, encourage people to get involved as well um, and join our community and our projects because as we say, as we've been saying a lot recently, having 200 million users is great, but if not many people are contributing, then it's just a, a nice number at the end. So as well as marketing the product, we are focusing on marketing the community and the project as well, that joining the project is not just a nice thing to do, it actually has some benefits. So um, the current status of our Twitter account, we are currently at about 35,000 followers, growing around 700 followers a month. As I mentioned, we are increasingly focusing on our project as much as the product. So um, not just telling people that LibreOffice exists, but that they can take part, that they can join the community, build up experience as well, get new experiences, which could be useful for a future career maybe. Um, so we're highlighting different activities in the community, community interviews and so forth, different local events, obviously many of them online this year. Um, always trying to add a call to action. So join us, be a part, um, make a difference. Don't just read about LibreOffice, but you can do something as well. We've been doing some polls. Twitter has an extremely basic uh, poll feature, like mini surveys to encourage interaction. We're a bit limited what we can do here because we can't promise any super special new features in the future. It all depends if anybody chooses to work on them. Um, We've been posting tips of the day, LibreOffice tips of the day as well, and these actually come from the source code, um, which also generates the tips in the LibreOffice tips box that appears when you first start the program, and on subsequent starts if you don't disable it. So it's the same source here to avoid duplication of effort. We just took all of those tips of the day and we post them once a day on Twitter. Uh, and also we've been trying to work more closely with the ecosystem members as well um, as a non-profit okay. foundation they're a bit limited in some of the things we can do but we um, we like or retweet activity from different ecosystem members as well who are contributing to to the office um, so there's a quick graph of the um, Twitter follow account since um, the start of last year so we've gone from about 23,000 to 35,000 almost 36,000 as well um, next up is Mastodon, um, which a lot of you may know is a um, federated open source microblogging service. So basically very similar to Twitter in its application, but much more friendly for free software communities as well. So um, last year we moved on to, uh, or we created a, a, a Mastodon account on the Fosterdon um, instance. So because it's federated, anybody can set up an instance. Um, and um, so the Fosterdon people very kindly, who host lots of different free and open source software projects, so they set us up with an account and we added logos and everything. And we post similar content to the um, Twitter account, but um, Mastodon is, uh, provides more room, more characters, uh, and a few other extra features as well. But most importantly, the Mastodon account um, Mastodon and Fosterdon are obviously much more technical in the audience. So we have a, a smaller audience there, 4.7 thousand um, followers. Um, and, um, but they are, they are very, very technically minded people. Um, 
William points out in the chat that Voston is English only, so um, yeah, I think um, we did try, somebody tried to set up another um, a LibreOffice account for another language of Vostodon, but it wasn't allowed. Oh, so William did, yeah, <laughs> thank you. But um, So um, I'm going to talk about this in a moment, the, the other languages, um, but um, so yeah, Mastodon has mentioned, federated, FOSS friendly, um, 4,600 followers so far, a technical audience, so they, they tend to ask us questions about the development of uh, LibreOffice, not end user questions, but you know, when are you going to implement this or how can I help out with, with that, so have, we have some very good discussions on there, often lots of different people from different free and open source software projects jump in to the discussions, which is really nice, it's like a, a little forum where you can see perspectives from different uh, free and open source software projects. So, again, a quick chart of the followers since we, we started the account about 18 months ago. Um, actually, a bit earlier than that because it starts here from 1500. But um, we had a, a very rapid um, growth as soon as we joined. And since then, okay. um, a nice steady growth as well. Cool. Facebook so page, uh, I won't talk about um, that much. Um, well, they like the, the Facebook, the growth area. is not particularly large these days, it's, it's sort of creeping up, uh, the page has been around for a long time, I think it's since the birth of the Office project, and it's very much focused on end users, like Facebook in general, uh, so we have 58,000 likes, which correlates to followers, because I think most people who like a page become automatic followers, so... Um, we get lots of questions on Facebook in all sorts of languages, and I was a bit puzzled by that at the, um, a while ago, but it's, I think it's because a lot of web browsers auto-translate pages now, so uh, we, our, face, our English language, LibreOffice Facebook page, we get questions in Estonian and all sorts of really interesting languages, but I'm like, okay, I don't think I can answer that, um, but I think a lot of people have these automatic translation tools installed. So someone comes along and thinks, oh, they've got this whole um, page in Estonian. Or as Simon points out, Facebook itself uh, often auto-translates comments and content. So a very useful feature, but it does <laughs> lead to some very interesting discussions. Um, I had a, a question in French recently, and I said, well, um, thanks for the question. The page is in English, but I'm going to try and auto-translate. And he said, no, no, your page is in French. Like, it's probably auto-translating. But um, we get some feature requests, of course, on Facebook. Um, so we point people to the fact that they can get involved or submit an enhancement request. But if they really want the feature, they should go to the ecosystem and, and hopefully support some developers to implement it. Now let's um, turn to the video channel, um, and and our YouTube video. channel, here is the LibreOffice 7.0 new features video that we put online two months ago, made by our super talented Indonesian community. Um, they made a brilliant video, much more lively and exciting than my previous videos, um, uh, which had a kind of different style as well. Um, but they, they used the, the new branding and the artwork and animations, it's shorter, very snappy, um, and yeah, 105,000 views uh, within two months. So um, it's really good result. And subtitles in, I think, 15 languages. Again, thanks to the community. Thanks to everybody who who translates um, the the scripts that we put on the wiki, um, the volunteer their time. That's we really really appreciate it. So that also helps to get the um, the the number of views. Uh, the videos up as well so big thanks to the indonesian community we'd love to work with you again on on another on the next video or indeed another video i want to make a new community video soon so a few a few extra stats about our video channel work so um yeah nearly two million views on our youtube channel now um with uh, almost twelve and a half thousand subscribers. We're posting the videos about the new releases, but some community activities as well. The German community is working on tutorial videos. Um, we're starting to upload some videos to PeerTube. At the moment, um, Paolo's instance, Paolo on our on our board of directors, um, but we are considering, our infrastructure team is considering setting up our own um, PeerTube instance as well. Um, we're looking at these things, or like William mentions, uh, a Mastodon instance. So we have to look at the resources that we have for these things. Um, and of course, the videos from this conference, 
uh, will hopefully be on YouTube and Peertube soon as well. Obviously, we've we had a few technical gremlins at the start of this, um, but we are trying to record the sessions, um, so uh, we will put them online um, after the after the conference. And another quick graph, also the last 18 months of video views on the YouTube channel going from 1.3 million to nearly 2 million. And you can see little little bumps in the graph there from from the releases. So a couple of months ago when we released LibreOffice 7.0 and the, the great video that we mentioned bumped up the, um, the views. And so finally, that's what we've been doing, but what's next? What, where can we improve? Um, what, where do we need help? So the biggest thing is having more social media um, in different locations and languages. Um, so we reached out to the Native Language Project about six months ago or, or a year ago, saying that there were still some big gaps um, in our social media coverage. We had nothing in Polish, for instance. Yeah, I think the, Poland is 40 million people and we had nothing. So. Um, a really cool guy, Marcin um, Popko, came in, came to me and said, what can I do? Let me, let me help out. And since then, he set up a um, Facebook Polish community. Uh, he's handing out stickers as well. He's organizing um, events, like mini events on the Polish Facebook page. So he's doing a fantastic job um, stepping in where there was a, a big language gap in our social media presence. Um, so we really appreciate that. So if anybody... Um, people watching now or watching the video later. And as Marina points out, Martin is a, is a TDF member as well now. Yeah, I encouraged him to join as a, as a member of TDF because he's, he's um, working hard in the community. So it's good to have him on board. Um, but yes, if uh, for everybody watching this at any point, um, if, you, if there is missing LibreOffice social media activity in your native language or a language you speak, um, let us know because we can work together to get things set up. Uh, we want to be, we we have LibreOffice in over 100 languages. Our localization community does a fantastic job uh, making it available to so many people. And we want the same with, with social media um, because um, there's a lot of things people can do on social media that are specific for their own audiences. So not just translating the tweets that we post, but actually um, focusing the social media activity on those um, uh, countries and regions where um, different things work better. So anybody wants to give us a hand, we'd really appreciate it. We will support you. Uh, we can give you materials. Um, so we also want more coordination then between the different native language accounts um, because we have lots of um, accounts working in, in different places, um, but we should perhaps try to coordinate them better, maybe set up a, a back channel. Um, like we have our marketing telegram group, for instance, but maybe we need something specific for um, the people running social media channels so we can really quickly respond and, and communicate. Um, we should do more activity as well, especially during the night uh, in Europe, because um, when, it's, when um, people in the USA come back from come back home in the evening. We tend to be rather quiet on social media then. So um, either um, be um, more active then, getting more people involved to be active then, or um, postponing tweets, automating tweets to be, postponed, uh, to be posted at those times. Then there are some up and coming social media services as well. Um, we see these popping up all the time. Um, that um, the thing is some of them are very political, like somebody gets banned from Twitter for controversial reasons and goes off and then promotes a new you know, free speech social media platform and everybody's talking about it for a while, but then it, it becomes complicated and, and this platform becomes very political or used for political things. So um, we need to keep our eyes open though. So if anybody sees a new um, social media platform that thinks it's worth checking out or it's worth at least getting established on, even if it's only a, a small amount of, of work, even if we only post one thing a day. But if we, uh, if there's something we're missing, we're far from perfect, then um, do let us know and, um, and we will investigate. So that's the, that's the state of play for the um, social media at the moment. Um, Bogdan says, thanks Mike, thank you Bogdan. <laughs> um, the, this is 
technically end of the session, but I don't, and we've got a half hour break now, but I don't think there is anything in this room right now. So we've st we can still leave it open for a few minutes if anybody has any questions or, or thoughts to share. It's always a pleasure to listen to you, Mike. Oh, thank you. <laughs> No, but thanks to um, thanks to everybody who who does work on their uh, different social media uh, channels and and the websites, of course, as well, and the videos and everything that we do. Like, um, there, there's only two of us here at TDF working on marketing and a lot of other jobs as well. So we um, uh, we we couldn't make this international effort possible yeah. without all of you. I see loads of things that I don't understand. I see the Japanese community tweeting and um, supporting us and translating things the same with the Brazilians um, the Brazilian community the Spanish speaking community as well um, so it's it's just it's fantastic to see and and, and, um, and it's quite humbling really that um, it's people in the community doing doing the really good work out there um, getting the word spread so yeah cheers everybody um, I hope you're enjoying the conference despite the um, limited setup this year, um, but we still have the chat room open as well. There is the conf underscore chat. Uh, I think I will pop in later for a beer. Um, and um, yeah, it's nice to see lots of names and faces. Some new, some new names as well. Some um, some names I know. And even though we can't be together in person this year, fingers fingers crossed, and everybody uh, that we can do it next year. Okay. Cheers, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. It was a pleasure. And thank you.